Walk in the footsteps of heroes on a Ledger Battlefields tour. Twelve hundred feet below the surface of the Pacific Ocean, a team of deep-sea divers and naval historians goes in search of the largest warship ever built. Over 60 years ago, in these same waters, the Japanese battleship Yamato was sunk by American air power. Her secrets were lost until now. Ah, this is a symbol. Was the Yamato really the most advanced warship of her time? And what is the truth of the purpose of her last mission? Somewhere in this twisted mass of steel and iron are the clues that could unravel one of the most enduring mysteries of the Second World War. In the port of Kure, in the south of Japan, a modern shipyard turns out some of the world's most advanced container ships. But a little over 60 years ago, this busy dockyard was the birthplace of one of the war's most extraordinary naval superweapons. Conceived and designed in total secrecy, she was the most powerful battleship ever built, the Yamato. The Yamato was thought to be twice the size of anything the Allies had to offer and possessed the biggest guns ever mounted on a warship. Her makers thought she was unsinkable, but no one expected that the pride of the Imperial Japanese Navy would have to face the enemy alone. The war was at last drawing to a close. By April 1945, Japanese cities were the target of daily attacks by vast fleets of Allied bombers. Her once great armed forces were struggling to hold back the American advance toward the home islands. In desperation, the Imperial Japanese High Command decided to unleash a new weapon. Squadrons of kamikaze pilots were sent to attack the American fleet. In a few horrific weeks, these suicide pilots introduced new terror to modern warfare. The Japanese commanders then raised the stakes of suicide combat even higher. Drastic orders were dispatched to the naval base at Kure, commanding a new and unprecedented act of martyrdom. The largest battleship ever built was ordered to sail unprotected directly into the 1,500 ships of the American fleet, which was rapidly approaching Japanese shores. Before dawn, on the 7th of April 1945, the 3,000 seamen of the battleship Yamato left Japanese home waters on the most desperate kamikaze mission of World War II. The 7th of April, 1945. At first light, American fighters and bombers from half a dozen aircraft carriers were ordered to scramble. The Americans had spotted the advancing Yamato, Japan's last great warship. Over 400 aircraft prepared to intercept her. Instead of any kind of fancy maneuvers, we just got over the target as close as we could and pushed straight over. And about 3,000 feet, bingo, we popped out of the base of the clouds and the ship was displayed in front of us. It was a perfect target. 
私はもうトップになってもう私はもうもう石がって投げたいですよ操縦桿肉取るのが肉眼で見えるんですよもう人間は。We deployed everything at one shot and I held on the trigger as long as I could and and got a few shots across the deck. 前の鉄板をせかピーンと私は無意識にこうするだけです。上官部はみんな倒れておりりまますす機上員が倒れておりますバックタンゴーツの破片が倒れますからねその繰り返しです。Swarms of planes descended on the Yamato from all directions. その瞬間にもう最近看板を下った人間はもう一三金も水でもう水没ですよね。で私らの下岩盤の閉院室には下からガラバーッと水があれよあれよに水が入ってきましてねで館内はもう電気はもう真っ暗だし真っ暗の中でこれはもう完全にもうアウトだと思っとったんですちなみですよもう手の飛んだまんくたまんと多分まだ呼吸しとるんですよ軍艦中山の各日当たりああまあ閉めてしまいます水が入った時に次の部屋上を及ぼさないように各部屋ごと突きってしまうわけですからだからいかに戦争の残酷なもんであってそうなったらね Thousands of men were trapped below decks as all the bulkheads were sealed to prevent the ship sinking 本に誰かね軍刀で直筆したいと書いたこれも面白い美談としてまあそういう人はないと思いますよ将棋がね直筆したいと誰か本人も知っておりますけどこれは私は信じがたいですよ船がぐらーっと横になったんです。手法が三本あるんですけども、三本の一番あの左舷の一本はね、水の中使っても見えなかったんです。In the confusion, some officers gave the order to abandon ship. で、その飛び込む瞬間がまあどういう瞬間だったかはあまり記憶にないんだけども、大爆発したんです。で、その音は。From 10 miles away, an American torpedo plane photographed the explosion and the last moments of the battleship Yamato as she sank. Japan's largest ship and almost 3,000 of her crew appeared to have been sacrificed. In terms of lives lost, The sinking was one of the worst naval disasters of all time. Walk in the footsteps of heroes. 200 miles south of Japan, an international team of divers and naval historians is hoping to solve the mystery of the Yamato's final mission. みんな熱くなっちゃうんです。ですから、あのそれがあの普通の関係ない人にもこう影響を及ぼすことによって、ヤマトはいつも時代でもその話題になっていくと。The French team supervisor Paul Nagelé is the leader of the dive onto the wreckage. Yamato was a very secret ship. The Japanese crew they want some answers because there is no full map of all the ship, and they were thinking. You know, they, were, they heard about some stuff, but they were not really sure. There is no real evidence. The team of divers employs two of the world's most sophisticated submersibles. Each of these mini submarines can descend to a depth of 3,000 feet. Their robot claws can recover small objects from the sea floor, and their glass bubble roofs give a panoramic view of the ocean all around them. A 1,200 feet gentle descent to the bottom takes about 15 minutes. You know when you dive for the first time on a wreck, and I'm thinking about the people who were on board the ship, what happened to them. It's a strong feeling, very strong. 1,200 feet down, 
The sonar echoes point to a mass of metal lying on the ocean floor. The two craft maneuver toward it. The sea floor is littered with so many cannon shells, it's certain that they've found a warship. However, during the war years, these waters became the graveyard of many vessels. The divers need to confirm that this is truly the wreck of the battleship Yamato. Like all great Japanese warships, the Yamato had one distinguishing feature which was visible from miles away. The Imperial Crest, a huge chrysanthemum shield protruded from her bow. The researchers know that if they can find the chrysanthemum, they can positively identify the Yamato. Beautiful, huh? Yes, beautiful. To ensure they have located the right ship, the submarine's robot claw positions a two-meter plastic measuring rod alongside the chrysanthemum shield. Oh, it's great. The Emperor's shield is exactly two meters in diameter. So there is no question. The expedition has found the Yamato, the greatest ship of the Imperial Japanese Navy. The battleship Yamato was the most powerful warship on Earth. She was built at a time when battleships were the undisputed symbols of the power of great nations. A few years after the loss of the Yamato, the end of the era of the battleship as superweapon was in sight. These all-conquering vessels were rendered obsolete by the changing nature of war at sea. The purpose of a battleship was to deliver devastating fire from big guns at great distance. The range of the guns was crucial. For the surface navy, if your ship could hit an enemy vessel while she was still too far away to fire back, you were effectively invulnerable. By 1904, battleships like those of America's Great White Fleet could fire their intimidating 12-inch guns to hit targets seven miles away. Japan had been quick to understand the strategic role of the modern battleship. In May 1905, her navy fought the mighty Russian fleet in the Straits of Tsushima. The Japanese fleet sank 19 Russian ships in a single day. Japan won great prestige as a result of the Battle of Tsushima Straits. The Japanese were the first non-white power to be admitted to the circle of great powers, uh, and it had been naval strength that, to a large measure, had uh, gained Japan admittance to this exclusive club. But it was an expensive club to belong to. In 1922, the Western powers signed a treaty limiting the size of their fleets. As the newest member of the elite fraternity, Japan was forced to agree to its terms. 
There was a great deal of resentment in Japan because British and Americans were allowed to have 15 battleships each. The Japanese were only allowed nine. So how did that happen? The time was that the number of American ships was not enough. So, one unit of the strength of the United States was strong enough to defeat the American ships. あの対応で複数の戦艦に対応できる能力を持とうというのでこれは絶対秘密にしなきゃいけないと。There were rumors that the Japanese were building ships of unusual size, but、uh, the stories were dismissed by one United States Navy spokesman privately as quote Nipponese rodent propaganda unquote. It's part of a pattern of underestimating the Japanese. The construction of the world's largest, most powerful battleship began in complete secrecy at the shipbuilding port of Kure. To block the view from the outside, construction workers stretched a mile of fishing net around the dry dock. No one person in Kure had access to the complete set of plans. Sakutaro Nishihata was one of the designers of the hidden vessel. Today, our knowledge of the Yamato's design is fragmentary. Only a few drawings and a handful of photographs survived the war. We do know that the scale of the Yamato was staggering, almost twice the displacement of any Allied battleship. Each of her three gun turrets weighed more than an entire American destroyer. Her main guns were designed to attack from the unprecedented range of 25 miles. At such a distance, the target could not be seen, even with binoculars. Spotter planes were necessary to direct the fire over the horizon. The ship was intended to be one of the most advanced weapon systems of her time. The battleship Yamato joined the fleet in December 1941. To preserve the secrecy of the ship's design, there was no official launch and no public celebration. Because of our reading of Japanese signals traffic, American intelligence analysts realized that the new flagship of the combined fleet was named Yamato. Knowing the name was, of course, fine, but it told us nothing about the capabilities of the ship. In Japan, the ship's name had a very special, almost religious significance. The word Yamato was a poetic synonym for Japan itself. ヤマトエコルノは一番トップでないとヤマトエコ乗れなかったですからもうあれに行ったらもう天狗みたいなもんですね。大きいな思いまして。真実かほんまに自分の帰るとこわからんぐらいですわよね。みんなそういう感じです
自分がせっかく作ったものが旧式の兵器になってしまいますからやっぱりそれはいけないということなんですね。大砲の大きさ直径とかそういうものはあの船に乗ってる艦長も司令官も知らされてなかったんですね。Japanese secrecy had proved to be ironclad. U.S. naval analysts believed that the Yamato was about the size of the new American battleships. But in reality, the Yamato was almost twice as big. The ship had to be so large because she was built around her guns, and they were the most enormous guns ever mounted on a warship. Exploring the gaping hole left where one of the huge gun turrets once rested, it is awe-inspiring to imagine the ferocity of the Yamato's firepower. So, when you shoot, you shoot the gun. When you shoot the gun, the gun is very dangerous. Firing 18 inch projectiles at supersonic speed, with each projectile weighing as much as a car, the Yamato's guns could punch a hole in sheet metal two feet thick. To support the weight and recoil of such massive guns, the Yamato needed to be unusually wide amidships. As the American Navy traversed two oceans, the width of her warships was determined by the width of the locks on the Panama Canal. The American designers had to struggle always with the problem that their battleships uh, had to fit in the 110-foot wide locks of the Panama Canal. The biggest American battleships were 108 feet 6 inches wide, uh, a very tight fit indeed. But the Yamato didn't need to go through the Panama Canal. She was designed to dominate the Pacific Ocean only. The extra breadth allowed the Yamato to be fitted with the thickest armor ever constructed for a battleship. The breadth for many years, naval architects had struggled to reduce resistance by experimenting with the shape of a vessel's bow. The width of the Yamato made such streamlining imperative. The as it moves through the water, the bow of a ship creates a constant wave. The Yamato's bulb created its own wave a few feet in front of the ship, which cancelled out the wave generated by the ship itself. With less wave action, the drag of the water was substantially reduced. The diving expedition has located the Yamato's front section sitting upright on the ocean floor. The unique silhouette of the bow is clearly visible. Naval historians will finally be able to analyze the exact shape of the bulbous bow and discover its secrets. The vulnerability of battleships like the Yamato was first demonstrated when Japan's Navy attacked the American fleet at Pearl Harbor. On the morning of the 7th of December, 1941, hundreds of aircraft from a Japanese fleet of aircraft carriers hit eight American battleships while they lay at anchor.
Then, three days later, Japan launched another air attack off the coast of Malaya. On this occasion, Japanese aircraft easily overwhelmed the new British battleship, HMS Prince of Wales, while she was fully armed and ready for combat on the high seas. This event was very shocking to professional naval opinion because the Prince of Wales was a, a new ship uh, ready for action, and yet Japanese planes sank that ship in a short order. Within three weeks of the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japanese aircraft had damaged or destroyed every Allied battleship in the Pacific Ocean. Japan had demonstrated to the world's navies how skillful use of air power could defeat the battleship. Despite this overwhelming success, the Japanese persisted in putting their faith in the invincibility of the Yamato. But the days of battleship to battleship warfare were waning. The Battle of Midway was the turning point of the Pacific War, and it was essentially a contest between aircraft carriers. In June 1942, the US Navy lured the Japanese fleet into a trap and then sent hundreds of aircraft to attack it. In hours, Japan lost four of her carriers and over 300 aircraft. It was a defeat from which the Imperial Navy could not recover. During the battle, the Yamato functioned as a command center, but it stayed 300 miles over the horizon, well beyond the range of the American aircraft. After the Battle of Midway, the Yamato lost the air cover which had been provided by the four aircraft carriers. She was forced to retreat to the safety of her naval bases. The crew waited and continued to prepare for a major battleship engagement, which never came. The Japanese never committed the Yamato. They felt they could not risk an irreplaceable treasure. The Yamato, from the end of August 1942 until May of 1943, was at sea for one day. Seldom leaving port, the sailors joked about being stationed on the Hotel Yamato. The battleship had become the Japanese Navy's most impressive white elephant. And while the Yamato sat in Kure Harbor, the Japanese Navy, meanwhile, was losing the war. Despite suffering appalling losses, American forces were retaking Japan's Pacific territories, island by island, invading Tinian, Saipan, and Iwo Jima step by step. They were approaching the sacred home islands. By April 1945, they were poised to invade Okinawa, only 300 miles from Japan itself. Short of everything but willing and devoted people, the Imperial Japanese High Command unleashed a lethal weapon. Kamikaze is the Japanese name for it. Fanatical death dives that are now the enemy's chief weapon. Aerial harakiri in a desperate attempt to smash our fleet. An American pilot, Ed Sieber, encountered his first kamikaze when it attempted to land on the USS Bennington. He was heading right down toward the toward the fantail of our ship. I happened to be on the base leg of my carrier approach. I rolled out and I had pulled the trigger. The ship's guns were firing. The kamikaze was hit. Part of the airplane landed on board our ship, scaring the life out of us. 
college, it was very awesome because, I mean, our psychology is not used to that idea. Okinawa Most of the kamikaze pilot volunteers were university students, though science students were deemed too valuable to sacrifice. Four hundred miles north of Okinawa, the Yamato sat in the relative safety of Kure Harbor. Its young officers knew that the kamikaze pilots were fighting a decisive battle only a day's sail away from them. By the spring of 1945, the kamikaze had hit 300 ships, killing thousands of American naval personnel. But even the wholesale sacrifice of the suicide pilots didn't stop the Allied advance. For the Japanese, the deaths recalled an ancient tradition of ritual suicide, a willingness to die for honor and the emperor. Here, perhaps, was a potent and an invisible weapon unique to Japan. While the Americans endured the kamikaze assaults on the approaches to Okinawa, another battle was being waged at Japanese naval headquarters. An air raid on Tokyo had left a million people homeless. The stench of death was everywhere. In such an atmosphere, how could the Navy fail to commit its greatest ship to the battle, even if it was a battle that could not be won? The admirals who had organized the young kamikaze pilots now prepared secret orders for an even more desperate plan. With virtually no air cover, the Yamato would sail towards the huge fleet of enemy warships approaching the beaches of Okinawa. If her big guns did not sink the enemy, she was instructed to ram them. Her crew would fight the Americans to the death, using their sidearms, their flare guns, or their bare hands.沖縄が取られてしまったらもう戦争に勝てないことは分かってるんですけど特攻隊が飛行機がアメリカの当直士官の注意事項としてこれで帰ってこれるかどうかわからんけどもそういう作戦の内容は絶対にあの話をしてはいけないと身辺の整理を全部してまあまあ借金払いもあるでしょうしねそういう身辺を整理して帰ってこい
まだね日は完全には沈んでなかったと思うんですが総員集合で全部上官前集まって副長の命令で皇居要拝して戦友と握手して今度阿部徳康子神社で会おうってみんなが何だかしな握手してねやったんに別れたんじそして軍歌歌ったんじ普段歌わる軍歌いかに恐怖吹きまくもたとえ敵か多くとも大和魂みじめる我らの願There were fierce squalls in the China Sea the night the Yamato sailed. Banks of low cloud would make it harder for enemy aircraft to spot the ship. The battleship and its small task force hugged the coast as they proceeded southwards. Miles away across the dark ocean, a screen of destroyers protected the Yamato from submarines. But nothing could protect her from an attack from the air. Below decks, on what might be the last night of their lives, the crew was allowed to relax. 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 まあ酒ビールをねみんな車座になって飲んだわけですわねだけどそら飲めて飲めるもんじゃないですよそらね。In the tense hours before dawn, the Yamato maintained its course straight towards the 1500 ships of the American fleet. 弱くなったら最後まで頑張って100なら100の力を出します。それこそ山田魂を発揮した最後まで。In the full light of morning, the first planes intercepted the Yamato while she was still 200 miles from the closest American ship. The vessel's lumbering 18-inch guns attempted to fire on the approaching aircraft from 10 miles distance, but the low clouds thwarted their accuracy. Once the first bombers penetrated the 10-mile screen, the Yamato's 100 anti-aircraft guns let loose. But almost all the 386 planes successfully reached their assault positions 20,000 feet directly above the ship. The first 500-pound bombs landed on the deck and fires broke out. The dive bombers would uh, strike from high above uh, and try to put bombs through the deck armor. Fighters would strafe the battleship to uh, reduce the effectiveness of the Japanese anti-aircraft fire. The killer, though, would be the torpedoes. The purpose of the airdrop torpedoes was to penetrate the Yamato below the waterline. Close to her bow and stern, where the armor plate was thinnest. Like the torpedo pilots used to say, if you want holes in the deck, send the dive bombers. If you want them sunk, send us. The aviators were told to torpedo her only on one side, flooding her on that side, leading the ship to capsize. After a dozen torpedo hits, even the Yamato's thousand watertight compartments couldn't save her. The lower decks flooded fast, and the battleship began to sink. A pair of the attacking planes stayed to film the final annihilation, while the rest of the American squadrons returned to their carriers. How could a huge ship with so many watertight compartments sink in under an hour? What caused the great explosions caught on camera in the final photographs of the battle? 
In studying the wreckage, the researchers attempt to reconstruct the Yamato's last moments. On the ocean floor, the hull of the ship sits in two huge pieces. The 3,000-ton gun turrets lie upside down in the silt. The jagged metal indicates a sudden, violent end. It becomes clear that the wreck has been torn apart by the massive explosions. These were far more powerful than the torpedo blasts. Flooded along one side by torpedo strikes and bomb blasts below deck, the doomed ship listed to port to the point where she became unstable. As she capsized, the gun turrets were ripped from their mountings by their own weight and plunged into the sea. In her aft powder magazines, tons of ammunition slammed together, causing at least three more powerful detonations, perhaps the largest explosions ever to occur at sea. The ship split into two parts and finally came to rest, 1,200 feet below. From the American Navy's point of view, the destruction of the world's most powerful warship had proved to be a methodical affair and a mere footnote in the overarching battle for control of the Pacific. The sinking of the Yamada was uh, noted with satisfaction in the headquarters of Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet, but the notice was brief. The Yamada was the only ship left that could cause us problems, and now uh, she was down. For the Japanese government, it spelled the end of the Imperial Navy. A picture frame, a bugle, and a porcelain bowl are some of the remnants of the Yamato's final day. These were recovered and preserved so that the ship will not be forgotten. The few sailors who survived the catastrophe do not need any reminders. どうしようがもう全然もう歌ままでね。で、泳いで泳いでバブ Expecting to sacrifice their lives, the 269 survivors were surprised to be picked up by a Japanese destroyer. For some weeks, the Japanese Navy refused to acknowledge that the Yamato had been lost with its complement of 3,000 men. The survivors were taken to a bombed port building where they were hidden away. A month after the sinking, they were finally allowed to return to their families. <laughs>
残念にお前言っときゃ思ってくださいつまんのお前In terms of the toll of human lives, the sinking of the Yamato was one of the worst naval disasters in history. The largest battleship ever built was conceived less as a practical weapon of war and more as a symbol of national prestige. When the Yamato left harbor on her final suicidal mission, the Admiral spoke of honor and immortal glory. But no one speaks for the 2,475 men entombed in her wreckage. We will never know their thoughts as they died. By the end of the Second World War, the aircraft carrier had replaced the battleship as the floating symbol of national might and prestige. In all the years since the Yamato was lost, no nation in the world. Has chosen to construct another battleship. Compelling viewing later on the History Channel. Find out what prompted Britain's most prolific hangman to leave the family business in the gruesome but fascinating Executioner Pierpoint tonight at 10.